Hi students, in this video, I am going to talk about bivariate normal distribution and order statistics. Okay. Bivariate normal distribution. A continuous bivariate random variable x, y is said to have bivariate normal distribution with the parameters mu1, mu2, sigma1 square, sigma2 square and rho if its joint PDF is given by this f of x, y equal to 1 by 2 pi sigma 1 sigma 2 under root 1 minus rho square e power minus 1 by 2 of 1 minus rho square of x minus mu 1 by sigma 1 whole square plus y minus mu 2 by sigma 2 whole square minus 2 rho times x minus mu 1 by sigma 1 times y minus mu 2 by sigma 2 okay for our x y belongs to r here mu 1 mu 2 are any real numbers sigma 1 positive sigma 2 positive rho is something between minus 1 and 1 okay fine here is the notation we read it as x y follows the bivariate normal distribution with the parameters mu 1 mu 2 sigma 1 square sigma 2 square and rho okay fine Here is the sketch for the surface of the PDF of bivariate normal distribution with the parameters mu1 0, mu2 0, sigma1 1, 1, sigma2 1, rho 0. Okay. Now you can play with this. Okay. You can change these parameters and see how the surface look like, you know. See, this is the surface of the PDF of the bivariate normal distribution with the parameters mu1 equal to minus 1, mu2 equal to 1, sigma1 equal to 2, sigma2 equal to 0 0.5, rho equal to minus 0 0.51. Okay. I hope you can play with this okay just uh, feel free to play with this fine now we want to see marginal and conditional distributions of this bivariate normal distribution here we have a giant pdf we know how to find marginal and conditional pdf from giant pdf okay to find the marginal pdf of x we integrate the giant PDF with respect to y from minus infinity to infinity. Okay. So, to make that integration process easy, we are going to try and factor this giant PDF as follows. Okay. Some function of x times some function of x and y. g1 of x times h1 of x y. In a way, this g1 of x should be PDF of some distribution. Okay. For a fixed x as a function of y, this should be PDF of some distribution. Okay. If this is the case, when you look for marginal PDF of x, what you do? You integrate the joint PDF from minus infinity to infinity with respect to y. Here the joint PDF we realized as g1 of x times h1 of xy. Now, here we are integrating with respect to y. So, g1 of x is a kind of a constant. So, we can bring out of the integration. I can write like this. Okay. Now, we are integrating this h1 of x y with respect to y. For a fixed x as a function of y, h1 of x y is PDF of some distribution. So, this integral value must be equal to 1. That is the one property of the PDF. So, so we will end up with g1 of x. So, therefore, the marginal PDF of x we got g1 of x. Once you got a marginal PDF of x, then we can look for conditional PDF of y given x. Conditional PDF of y given x. It's going to be joint PDF by marginal pdf of x so this is going to be g1 of x times h1 of x y 
and and f x of x we got g one of x. So these two cancel. We have h one of x y. So in this factorization, this g one of x going to be marginal p d f of x, and this h one of x y going to be conditional p d f of y given x. Okay. And in this joint PDF, there is a symmetry in X and Y. So, you should also be able to express the same joint PDF like this. Some function of Y times some function of XY, like a G2 of Y times H2 of XY. In a way, this G2 of Y is PDF of some distribution. Okay. And for a fixed Y, as a function of X, this H2 of XY should be PDF of some distribution. If this is the case, then you will realize that marginal PDF of y is going to be this g2 of y, and the conditional PDF of x given y is going to be this h2 of xy. Okay. From this factorization, you will realize that this g2 of y is marginal PDF of y. This h2 of xy is going to be conditional PDF of x given y. Okay. So this is how we can see marginal and conditional PDFs once we have these factorizations. Now our task is to get these factorizations. Okay, fine. First, I'm going to try and factor this giant PDF like this: some g2 of y times some h2 of x y. Okay, okay. Now here. If I think like this is a square, this is like a minus 2ab, I want to be able to complete square. So the b square part is missing. So what will be b? If this is a square, that means x minus mu 1 by sigma 1 going to be a. So the b going to be rho times y minus mu 2 by sigma 2. So the b square going to be rho square times y minus mu 2 by sigma 2 whole square. Okay, so let me add and subtract this rho square times y minus mu 2 by sigma 2 whole square. Okay, so here, so I added and I subtracted here. We already have this y minus mu 2 by sigma 2 whole square. So I am writing here 1 minus rho square of y minus mu 2 by sigma 2 whole square. Okay, now we have here like a, a square plus b square minus 2ab form. So now I can complete square. Now, now these three terms will complete square. So I can write 1 by 2 pi sigma 1 sigma 2 under root 1 minus rho square e power minus 1 by 2 of 1 minus rho square of this one x minus mu 1 by sigma 1 minus rho of y minus mu 2 by sigma 2 whole square plus 1 minus rho square of y minus mu 2 by sigma 2 whole square. Fine. Okay. Now, if I multiply this minus 1 by 2 of 1 minus rho square inside, so I will have this one. Here, this 1 minus rho square, 1 minus rho square cancel, then you will have minus 1 by 2 of y minus mu 2 by sigma 2 whole square. Okay. Now, using exponential property, I can write this one as like this. Okay. e power minus 1 by 2 of 1 minus rho square of this x minus mu 1 by sigma 1 minus rho of y minus mu 2 by sigma 2 whole square times e power minus 1 by 2 of y minus mu 2 by sigma 2 whole square. Okay. Now from here let me take sigma 1 in the denominator common. So 1 by sigma 1 square will come out. So then I can write minus 1 by 2 of 1 minus rho square sigma 1 square times x minus mu 1 minus rho sigma 1 y minus mu 2 by sigma 2 whole square. Okay. This one as it is. Okay. Let me write this one in the next step. Okay. Now in the next step, I am going to write this one as x minus of mu 1 plus rho sigma 1 by sigma 2 y minus mu 2 and I am going to break this 2 pi as root 2 pi into root 2 pi. Okay. So let me adjust this constant like this. Okay. Now 
here 1 by root 2 by sigma 2 times this e power minus 1 by 12 y minus mu 2 by sigma 2 whole square this is going to be our g2 of y okay now the remaining part root 2 pi sigma 1 times under root 1 minus rho square e power minus 1 by 12 1 minus rho square sigma 1 square of is x minus of mu 1 plus rho sigma 1 by sigma 2 times y minus mu 2 whole square okay fine we know that pdf of normal distribution with a parameter mu and sigma square we write like this right 1 by root 2 pi sigma e power minus 1 by 2 of x minus mu by sigma whole square you can also write the same thing like this 1 by root 2 pi sigma e power minus 1 by 2 sigma square of x minus mu whole square okay okay now this one look like this one and this one look like this one because here see now i can say this g2 of y is pdf of normal distribution with the mean parameter mu2 and the variance parameter sigma2 square okay now for a fixed y as a function of x this h2 of x y going to be pdf of normal distribution with the mean parameter mu1 plus rho of sigma1 by sigma2 of y minus mu2 and the variance parameter is this 1 minus rho square times sigma1 square because this is a variance right this is the mean okay so the role of the mean parameter is played by this mu1 plus rho of sigma1 by sigma2 of y minus mu2 the role of the variance parameter is played by 1 minus rho square times sigma1 square fine okay so okay so this is our factorization as you know like a g2 of y times h2 of xy similarly we can also factorize the same giant pdf like this okay 1 by root 2 pi sigma 1 e power minus 1 by 2 of x minus mu 1 by sigma 1 all square this is going to be our g1 of x 1 by root 2 pi sigma 2 of under root 1 minus rho square e power minus 1 by 2 of 1 minus rho square sigma 2 square of y minus of mu 2 plus rho sigma 2 by sigma 1 of x minus mu 1 whole square okay so this is going to be our h1 of x1 okay again you can see that this g1 of x is pdf of normal distribution with a mean parameter mu 1 the variance parameter is sigma 1 square okay and this one for a fixed x as a function of y can be seen as pdf of the normal distribution with mean parameter is this mu 2 plus rho of sigma 2 by sigma 1 of x minus mu 1 and the variance parameter is this 1 minus rho square times sigma 2 square okay fine from this factorization we can see that this is the marginal pdf of y this is the conditional pdf of x given y okay from this factorization we can see that this is the marginal pdf of x this is the conditional pdf of y given x okay fine now we can write down marginal pdfs of x and y here is the marginal pdf of x fx of x equal to 1 by root 2 pi sigma 1 times e power minus 1 by 2 of x minus mu 1 by sigma 1 of square so therefore we can say this x follows the normal distribution with the mean parameter mu 1 variance parameter sigma 1 square similarly the marginal pdf of y fi of y equal to 1 by root 2 pi sigma 2 e power minus 1 by 2 of y minus mu 2 by sigma 2 whole square therefore we can say this y follows the normal distribution with the mean parameter mu 2 the variance parameter sigma 2 square fine now we can write down conditional pdfs here is the conditional pdf of x given y this one we can see as pdf of normal distribution with the mean parameter mu1 plus rho of sigma1 by sigma2 of y minus mu2 and the variance parameter sigma1 square times 1 minus rho square 
Similarly, conditional PDF of y given x is this. This can be seen as PDF of normal distribution with the mean parameter mu2 plus rho of sigma2 by sigma1 of x minus mu1 and the variance parameter sigma2 square times 1 minus rho square. Okay, fine. Now we have seen that marginal and conditional distributions of bivariate normal distribution are univariate normal. Okay, fine. If x y follows the bivariate normal distribution, then marginal and conditional distributions are univariate normal that we have already seen. Actually, converse also true. For any bivariate distribution, if marginal and conditional distributions are univariate normal, then joint distribution going to be bivariate normal. Okay, fine. Note, if x y follows the bivariate normal distribution, with the parameters mu1, mu2, sigma1 square, sigma2 square and rho, then expectation of x equal to mu1 and variance of x equal to sigma1 square because x follows the normal distribution with the mean parameter mu1, variance parameter sigma1 square. Okay. Similarly, we can see that expectation of y is mu2, variance of y is sigma2 square because y follows the normal distribution with the mean parameter mu2 variance parameter sigma2 square so these things are clear what about fifth parameter you may be guessing because of the symbol that we have used maybe rho represent correlation coefficient between x and y yes you are right so this rho is going to be correlation coefficient between x and y okay let me show this now let me consider covariance of x, y. By definition, covariance of x, y equal to expectation of x minus mu1 times y minus mu2. If you think like a, this one is g of x, y, this joint expectation of g of x, y you can write univariate expectation of conditional expectation like this. Okay. So this is the univariate expectation. This is conditional expectation. So, this joint expectation of x minus mu1 times y minus mu2, I can write univariate expectation of conditional expectation of x minus mu1 times y minus mu2 given x. Here, inner expectation is conditional expectation of this x minus mu1 times y minus mu2 given x. So, x things are going to be constant. So, this x minus mu1, I can write off the inner expectation like this. Okay. So, expectation of x minus mu1 times expectation of y minus mu2 given x. Okay. So, this expectation of y minus mu2 given x, I can write as rho sigma2 by sigma1 times x minus mu1. The reason is we know that y given x follows the normal distribution with the mean parameter mu2 plus rho of sigma2 by sigma1 times x minus mu1. So, y minus mu2 given x follows the normal distribution with the parameter rho sigma2 by sigma1 x minus mu1 and the variance parameter will be same sigma2 square 1 minus rho square. That's why expectation of this y minus mu2 given x I can write as rho times sigma2 by sigma1 times x minus mu1. Okay. Now this rho times sigma2 by sigma1 constant. So if I bring out of the integration, I can write like this rho times sigma2 by sigma1 x minus mu1 times x minus mu1 going to be x minus mu1 all square. So we have rho sigma2 by sigma1 expectation of x minus mu1 all square. So this is exactly the variance of x which is sigma1 square. So I am writing rho sigma2 by sigma1 times sigma1 square. This sigma1 this square will go. We have a rho sigma1 sigma2. So the covariance of x y we got rho sigma1 sigma2. So the rho going to be covariance of x y by sigma1 sigma2 which is exactly correlation coefficient between x and y. So this fifth parameter rho represent correlation coefficient between x and y. Okay. Note 2. If x y follows the bivariate normal distribution with the parameters mu1, mu2, sigma1 square, sigma2 square and rho, if the fifth parameter rho equals 0, then x and y are independent. 
you can easily see this if rho equal 0 from one of the factorization okay from the two we can see that if i simply plug it rho equal 0 immediately you would see that joint pdf equal to product of marginal pdfs okay so therefore x and y are independent fine so in this bivariate normal distribution if the fifth parameter rho equal 0 then we can say x and y are independent fine for general bivariate random variable x y we know that x and y are independent implies correlation coefficient between x and y zero and converse may not be true we have seen some counter examples but for a bivariate normal random variable x y we can say this x and y are independent if and only if correlation coefficient between x and y zero because from node 2 we have seen that if the fifth parameter rho equal 0 then x and y are independent but what is the fifth parameter fifth parameter actually represent correlation coefficient between x and y okay that's why we can say that for a bivariate normal random variable x y x and y are independent if and only if correlation coefficient between x and y zero okay converts also true for a bivariate normal distribution fine problem the amount of rainfall recorded at year's weather station in january february or x comma y respectively suppose x y follows the bivariate normal distribution with the parameters mu1 equal to 6 mu2 equal to 4 sigma1 square equal to 1 sigma2 square equal to 0 0.25 and rho equal to 0 0.1 then find the probability of x less than or equal to 5, probability of y less than or equal to 5, given x equal to 5. Okay. Okay. Here, x, y follows the bivariate normal distribution with the parameters mu1 equal to 6, mu2 equal to 4, sigma1 square equal to 1, sigma 2 square equal to 0 0.25 and the row equal to 0 0.1 okay now to answer probability of x less than or equal to 5 we need a marginal distribution of x to answer probability of y less than or equal to 5 given x equal to 5 we need a conditional distribution of y given x okay we already know that x follows the normal distribution with the parameters mu1 comma sigma1 square and y given x equal to x follows the normal distribution with the parameter mu2 plus rho of sigma2 by sigma1 times x minus mu1 sigma2 square times 1 minus rho square so we can say that here x follows the normal distribution with the parameter 6 comma 1 because mu 1 equal to 6 sigma 1 square is 1 here y given x equal to 5 from this i can say it's going to be normal with the mean parameter is going to be this 4 plus because mu 2 is 4 okay rho that is 0 0.1 and sigma 2 is 0 0.5 because sigma 2 square is 0 0.25 sigma 1 is 1 because sigma 1 square is 1 so sigma 1 is 1 okay and small x which is given 5 okay minus mu 1 mu 1 is 6 okay okay this whole thing gets simplified to 3.975 and the variance parameter sigma 2 square sigma 2 square is 0 0.25 times 1 minus 0 0.1 square okay this gets simplified to 0 0.2475 so y given x equal to 5 follows the normal distribution with a mean parameter 3.975 and the variance parameter 0 0.2475 fine okay now let's answer the probability of x less than or equal to 5 if the probability of x less than or equal to 5 okay it's going to be cdf value of x at 5 here the connection between cdf of x and cdf of standard normal is this because x follows the normal with the parameters 6 comma 1 
So the fx of x going to be phi of x minus 6 by 1. Here our small x is phi, so fx of phi going to be phi of phi minus 6 by 1. That's going to be phi of minus 1. The phi of minus 1 I can write 1 minus phi of 1. Okay. Phi of 1 value from the table is going to be 0 0.8413. It's from standard normal table. So 1 minus 0 0.8413 is going to be 0 0.1587. Okay, this is a, the probability of x less than or equal to 5. Fine. Okay. Now, now the probability of y less than or equal to 5 given x equal to 5 is going to be conditional CDF of y given x equal to phi at phi and the connection between CDF of y given x equal to phi and CDF of standard normal random variable is this because y given x equal to phi follows the normal distribution with the mean parameter 3.975 and the variance parameter 0 0.2475. Here the variance is 0 0.2475 so the standard deviation will be 0 0.4975. So this is the connection fine. So the CDF of y given x equal to phi at phi is going to be phi of phi minus 3.975 by 0 0.4975. This gets simplified to 2.06. So we want phi of 2.06 value from the standard normal table. You can see that this is going to be 0 0.9803. Okay. So therefore, the probability of y less than or equal to 5 given x equal to 5 equal to 0 0.9803. Okay. Fine. We know MGF of normal distribution with the mean parameter mu and variance parameter sigma square is e power mu t plus of sigma square t square. That is MGF of normal distribution with a mean parameter mu and variance parameter sigma square at t okay let's say m of t is going to be what e power mu p plus of sigma square t square this is the mgf of normal distribution with a mean parameter mu variance parameter sigma square okay now if x y follows the bivariate normal distribution with the parameters mu1, mu2, sigma1 square, sigma2 square and rho, then I can say mgf of x at t e power mu1 t plus of sigma1 t square because x follows the normal distribution with the mean parameter mu equal to mu1, the variance parameter sigma square equal to sigma1 square. That's why from this I can say mgf of x at t is going to be e power mu1 t plus of sigma1 square t square. Similarly, mgf of y at t is going to be e power mu t plus of sigma2 square t square because y follows the normal distribution with the mean parameter mu2, the variance parameter sigma2 square. Okay, fine. Now, the conditional mgf of x given y equal to y at t, we can write this one because x given y equal to y follows the normal distribution with the mean parameter mu equal to mu1 plus rho of sigma1 by sigma2 of y minus mu2 and the variance parameter sigma square is sigma1 square of 1 minus rho square. Simply, I am just writing like this in place of mu, I am writing this mean parameter in place of the sigma square, I am writing this variance parameter okay sigma 1 square times 1 minus rho square so this is going to be conditional mgf of x given y equal to y at t okay fine similarly conditional mgf of y given x equal to x at t going to be this one because y given x equal to x follows the normal distribution with a mean parameter mu equal to mu2 plus rho of sigma2 by sigma1 of x minus mu1 and the variance parameter sigma square is sigma 2 square of 1 minus rho square. Okay. So these are the marginal and conditional MGFs of bivariate normal distribution. Now question is what is the joint MGF of bivariate normal distribution? Okay. Let's try to see that. 
Now we are going to see joint MGF of bivariate normal distribution with the parameters mu1, mu2, sigma1 square, sigma2 square and rho. Okay. By definition, the joint MGF of x, y, t1, t2 is expectation of t power t1, x plus t2, y. If you think this is like a g of x, y, we know the joint expectation of g of x, y we can write univariate expectation of conditional expectation of g of x y given y. So, the joint expectation of t power t1 x plus t2 y I can write like this. Okay. Now, this t power t1 x plus t2 y I can write t power t1 x times t power t2 y. Fine. Now, this inner expectation is conditional expectation of t power t1 x plus t2 y given y. So, things involving y kind of a constant. So, this e power t2 y, I can bring out of this inner expectation like this. Okay. Now, this conditional expectation of e power t1 x given y, we can realize as conditional MGF of x given by value at t1. Okay. Fine. In the previous slide, we have seen what is this conditional MGF of x given y. Okay, now let me write down this conditional MGF of x given by value at t1. So, this is the conditional MGF of x given by value at t1. Okay, now let me rewrite this expectation like this. First, let me separate terms not involving y like this e power mu1 t1 minus rho sigma1 by sigma2 mu2 t1 plus of 1 minus rho square sigma 1 square t1 square now the terms involving y is e power t2 plus rho sigma 1 by sigma 2 t1 of y okay here, as we can see, y is not involved. So, this is kind of a constant. So, I can bring out of the expectation like this. Now, we have expectation of e power t2 plus rho of sigma 1 by sigma 2 t1 of y. This thing can be realized as mgf value of y at t2 plus rho sigma 1 by sigma 2 at t1. Okay. Because if you think like this is t, this look like an expectation of e power t1. That's what mgf of y at t. But in place of t, we have t2 plus rho of sigma 1 by sigma 2 t1. Okay, fine. So I'm writing so mgf value of at t2 plus rho sigma 1 by sigma 2 at t1. We know mgf of y at t1 to be e power mu 2 t plus of sigma 2 square t square simply we replace t with the t2 plus rho sigma 1 by sigma 2 t1 so we end up with this e power mu 2 t2 plus rho sigma 1 by sigma 2 t1 plus of sigma 2 square t2 plus rho sigma 1 by sigma 2 t1 all square okay okay here if you multiply this mu 2 inside and expand this one you will end up with this one now you can see this one, this one get cancelled. Okay. Then we have e power mu1 t1 plus mu2 t2 plus of sigma1 square t1 square plus of sigma2 square t2 square plus rho sigma1 sigma2 t1 t2. Fine. Okay, so this is a joint MGF of x, y at t1, t2. e power mu1, t1 plus mu2, t2 plus half sigma1 square, t1 square plus half sigma2 square, t2 square plus rho sigma1, sigma2, t1, t2. Fine, so this is a joint MGF of bivariate normal distribution with the parameters mu1, mu2, sigma1 square, sigma2 square and rho. Fine, okay. Next, I am going to express this joint MGF in vector notation. Okay, fine.
Now I'm going to rewrite this joint MGF in vector notation as follows. Joint MGF of x, y, at t1, t2, I'm writing as e power mu under bar transpose t under bar plus of t under bar transpose sigma t under bar. Here this mu under bar is column matrix mu1, mu2. T under bar is column matrix t1, t2. This sigma is 2 by 2 matrix, something called covariance matrix of x, comma y, where 1, 1 entry is covariance of x, comma x, which is same as variance of x, so I am getting sigma 1 square, and 1, 2 entry is covariance of x, y, 2, 1 entry is covariance of y, x, both are equal and equal to rho sigma 1, sigma 2, and 2, 2 entry is covariance of y, comma y, which is same as variance of y, so I am getting sigma 2 square. So the sigma is something called covariance matrix of x, y. Okay. Now, you can see that this mu under bar transpose t under bar as a matrix multiplication, you will see mu 1 t 1 plus mu 2 t 2. Okay. Also, as a matrix multiplication of this t under bar transpose sigma t under bar, if you look at this of t1, t2, sigma1 square, rho sigma1, sigma2, rho sigma1, sigma2, sigma2 square, and the column matrix t1, t2. If you multiply as a matrix multiplication, you will end up with precisely this of sigma1 square, t1 square, of sigma2 square, t2 square, plus rho sigma1, sigma2, t1, t2. Okay? Okay? So this is a joint MGF of x, y, t1, t2 in vector notation. Fine. Okay. Theorem. x, y follows the bivariate normal distribution with the parameters mu1, mu2, sigma1 square, sigma2 square rho if and only if x plus b, y follows the univariate normal with the mean parameter a mu1 plus b mu2 and variance parameter a square sigma 1 square plus b square sigma 2 square plus 2ab rho sigma 1 sigma 2 for all ab belongs to r. Okay. Okay. We have to prove it in two directions. Okay. First let me assume x y follows the bivariate normal distribution with these parameters. Then let me show x plus b y follows the univariate normal with this mean parameter and this variance parameter. Okay. Okay. Proof. Let x, y follows the bivariate normal distribution with the parameters mu1, mu2, sigma1 square, sigma2 square and rho. Okay. Now I want to show this x plus b, y follows univariate normal with these parameters. Okay. Now let me consider w which is x plus b, y for a, b belongs to r. Okay. Now let me look at the MGF of w. MGF of W at T going to be by definition expectation of E power T W. What is W? X plus B Y. So this is what? Expectation of E power T of X plus B Y. Next I can write this one. E power T A X plus T B Y. Okay. Now this one can be realized as if you think this is like a T1, this is like a T2. Okay, this one we can see as a joint MGF of x, y at t1, t2. Here t1 is a, t, t2 is b, t. Okay, we already know what is the joint MGF of x, y at t1, t2. Simply we are going to write a, t for t1, b, t for t2 in the joint MGF of x, y at t1, t2. So we have this one e power mu1 a, t plus mu2 bt plus of sigma 1 square a square t square plus of sigma 2 square b square t square plus rho sigma 1 sigma 2 a t bt okay fine now now this gets simplified to this one e power a mu 1 plus b mu 2 of t plus of 
a square sigma 1 square plus b square sigma 2 square plus 2ab rho sigma 1 sigma 2 of t square. Now, this we can recognize as MGF of univariate normal distribution with the mean parameter a mu 1 plus b mu 2 and the variance parameter a square sigma 1 square plus b square sigma 2 square plus 2ab rho sigma 1 sigma 2. Okay, fine. So, by uniqueness of MGF, we can say that this W equal to x plus by follows the normal distribution with the mean parameter a mu 1 plus b mu 2, variance parameter a square sigma 1 square plus b square sigma 2 square plus 2ab rho sigma 1 sigma 2. Okay. Now we are done with the one direction. Now we have to prove other direction. That is, for any t1, t2 belongs to R. Okay. We assume that this T1x plus T2y univariate normal. Instead of A and B, I am taking T1, T2. Okay. So for any T1, T2 belongs to R, this T1x plus T2y is univariate normal with a mean parameter T1 mu1 plus T2 mu2. The variance parameter T1 square sigma1 square plus T2 square sigma2 square plus 2 T1 rho sigma1 sigma2. I am assuming this. Instead of A and B, I am just taking T1, T2 for convenience. Okay. Okay. Now we want to show X, Y follows the bivariate normal distribution with the parameters mu1, mu2, sigma1 square, sigma2 square, and rho. What we are going to do? We are going to look at joint MGF of X, Y, and we are going to recognize as joint MGF of bivariate normal distribution with the parameters mu1, mu2, sigma1 square, sigma2 square, and rho. That's an idea, okay? Since T1x plus T2y is univariate normal with this mean parameter and this variance parameter, so I can write down MGF of T1x plus T2y at T like this, okay? E power T1 mu1 plus T2 mu2 of T plus of T1 square sigma1 square plus T2 square sigma 2 square plus 2 t1 t2 rho sigma 1 sigma 2 of t square. This is the MGF of t1x plus t2y at t since t1x plus t2y follows normal distribution with this mean parameter, this variance parameter. So we can write this. Okay, fine. Now we are going to look at joint MGF of x square. The joint MGF of x, y at t1, t2 by definition, expectation of t power t1 x plus t2 y. This expectation we can also see as expectation of t power t1 x plus t2 y of 1. And this expectation can be realized as MGF of t1 x plus t2 y value at 1. This is the MGF of t1 x plus t2 y value at t. If you take t equal to 1 here, you will end up with this. This gets simplified to this one. This is a joint MGF of x, y at t1, t2. Now this we can recognize as joint MGF of bivariate normal distribution with the parameters mu1, mu2, sigma1 square, sigma2 square and rho. Okay. As we know, MGF uniquely determines probability distribution. So we can say this x, y follows the bivariate normal distribution with the parameters mu1, mu2, sigma1 square, sigma2 square and rho. Okay, fine. Therefore, x, y follows the bivariate normal distribution with the parameters mu1, mu2, sigma1 square, sigma2 square, rho. Okay, fine. Example. That x y follows the bivariate normal distribution with the parameters mu1 equal to 1, mu2 equal 0, sigma1 square equal to 1, sigma2 square equal to 4, and rho equal to 1 by 2. Then we have to find three things here. First one, the probability of 2x plus y less than or equal to 3. The second one, covariance of x plus y comma 2x minus y. Third one, the conditional probability of y greater than 2 given x equal to. Okay. Okay. Here x, y follows the bivariate normal distribution 
with the parameters mu1 equal to 1, mu2 equal 0, sigma1 square equal to 1, sigma2 square equal to 4 and rho equal to 1 by 2. So I can say sigma1 equal to 1 and sigma2 equal to 2. Fine. Now let w equal to 2x plus y. This 2x plus y look like ax plus by for a equal to 2, b equal to 1. From above theorem, we can say that this ax plus by follows univariate normal with a mean parameter a mu1 plus b mu2 and the variance parameter a square sigma1 square plus b square sigma2 square plus 2ab rho sigma1 sigma2 okay so we can say that this w equal to 2x plus y follows univariate normal with a mean parameter 2 and the variance parameter this gets simplified to 12 so i can say this w follows normal distribution with a mean parameter 2 and variance parameter 12 so i can write this cdf of w in terms of cdf of standard normal like this okay f w of x equal to phi of x minus 2 by root 12. I'm writing like you know phi of x minus mu by sigma. Okay, here the mu equal to 2. Okay, sigma going to be root 12 because sigma square is 12, so sigma will be root 12. Okay, fine. Now let us answer question 1 probability of 2x plus y less than or equal to 3, that is probability of w less than or equal 3 which is going to be cdf of w at 3 this we can write phi of 3 minus 2 by root 12 this 3 minus 2 by root 12 value will be simplified to 0 0.29 phi of 0 0.29 value from the standard normal table we can see that 0 0.61409 so the probability of 2x plus y less than or equal 3 value 0 0.61409 okay Fine. Second question. Now we want to see covariance of x plus y comma 2x minus 5. Before that, first let us look at the covariance of x comma y. This is going to be rho sigma 1 sigma 2. Rho value we have 1 by 2. Sigma 1 value we have a 1. Sigma 2 value 2. So this gets simplified to 1. So covariance of x y 1. Okay. Now the covariance of x plus y comma 2x minus y, so we can see that this is going to be 2 times covariance of x comma x minus covariance of x comma y plus 2 times covariance of y comma x minus covariance of y comma y. This covariance of x comma x I can write the variance of x, okay. And this covariance of x y, covariance of y x, both are same. This one I can write two times covariance of x y, and covariance of y comma y is going to be variance of y. So this is going to be two times variance of x. These two get simplified to covariance of x y minus variance of y. Okay. Now we have a variance of x sigma one square equal to one. And the variance of y sigma 2 square equal to 4 okay and the covariance of x y we got 1 so there are 2 times 1 plus 1 minus 4 okay this whole thing gets simplified to minus 1 so the covariance of x plus y comma 2x minus y equal to minus 1 fine okay third question here we want to find conditional probability of y greater than 2 given x equal to. To find this probability, we need a conditional distribution of y given x equal to. Actually, what we know, y given x equal to x follows normal distribution with a mean parameter mu2 plus rho sigma2 by sigma1 of x minus mu1. In the variance parameter sigma 2 square times 1 minus rho square okay so we can say this y given x equal to follows normal distribution with a mean parameter here you see mu 2 is 0 the rho is 1 by 2 sigma 2 2 sigma 1 1 
and x the given x is 2 and the mu 1 is 1 so this mean parameter will be simplified to 1 and with the variance parameter sigma 2 square 4 1 minus the row is 1 by 2 so 1 minus 1 by 2 whole square this variance parameter will be simplified to 3 so we can say that this y given x equal to follows normal distribution with a mean parameter 1 a variance parameter 3 so the conditional cdf of y given x equal to x y we can draw phi of y minus 1 by root 3 in terms of cdf of standard normal okay here i am writing like you know phi of y minus mu by sigma here the mu is 1 sigma square is 3 that implies sigma going to be root 3 okay that's why the cd of y given x equal to at y going to be phi of y minus 1 by root 3 okay now the probability of y greater than 2 given x equal to i can write 1 minus probability of y less than or equal to given x equal to this probability of y less than or equal to given x equal to i can write conditional cdf of y given x equal to x2 so this is going to be 1 minus phi of 2 minus 1 by root 3 it's going to be 1 minus phi of 1 by root 3 so 1 by root 3 value 0 0.58 and phi of 0 0.58 value from the standard normal table it's going to be 0 0.7190 so 1 minus 0 0.7190 going to be 0 0.281 okay so the probability of y greater than 2 given x equal to equal to 0 0.281 fine Now we are going to see multivariate normal distribution. We say a k dimensional random vector x under bar, which is a vector of k random variables x1, x2, xk, has a multivariate normal distribution with a mean vector mu under bar and the covariance matrix sigma if its joint PDF is given by this fx under bar of x under bar equal to 1 by 2 pi to the power of k by 2 determinant of sigma all to the power of 1 by 2 this is nothing but root dead sigma okay e power minus 1 by 2 of x under bar minus mu under bar all transpose sigma inverse trans x under bar minus mu under bar this whole thing you see as a matrix multiplication because here x under bar mu under bar we see as a column matrix of order k by 1 okay and the sigma is going to be k by k matrix where ith entry is covariance of xi comma x2 okay so this is the joint pdf of multivariate normal distribution with a mean vector mu under bar and the covariance matrix sigma okay fine now now for k equal to this joint pdf going to be joint pdf of bivariate normal distribution let me show you that okay now let me take this x under bar as x y mu under bar as mu 1 mu 2 that implies then x under bar minus mu under bar going to be x minus mu 1 y minus mu 2 okay and here the covariance matrix sigma going to be 2 by 2 matrix which is sigma 1 square rho sigma 1 sigma 2 rho sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 2 square okay that implies determinant of this sigma going to be sigma 1 square sigma 2 square times 1 minus rho square okay also we can see the inverse of this matrix going to be 1 by determinant that is sigma 1 square sigma 2 square 1 minus rho square and sigma 2 square minus rho sigma 1 sigma 2 minus rho sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 1 square because we write inverse of 2 by 2 matrix a b c d like this 1 by a d minus b c d minus b minus c j okay that's why 
the sigma inverse multiply this fine now for k equal to 2 2 pi to the power of k by 2 going to be 2 pi and square root of the determinant of sigma going to be sigma 1 sigma 2 under root 1 minus rho square now let us see what this one simplified to okay this is minus 1 by 2 of x under bar minus mu under bar whole transpose i can write x minus mu 1 y minus mu 2 okay sigma inverse is 1 by sigma 1 square sigma 2 square 1 minus rho square sigma 2 square minus rho sigma 1 sigma 2 minus rho sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 1 square and x under bar minus mu under bar i write as x minus mu 1 y minus mu 2 okay now first let me multiply this first of all let me write minus 1 by 2 sigma 1 square sigma 2 square 1 minus rho square x minus mu 1 y minus mu 2 okay if i multiply this this is a 2 by 2 matrix this one is 2 by 1 matrix so resulting one going to be 2 by 1 matrix so it's going to be sigma 2 square x minus mu 1 minus rho sigma 1 sigma 2 y minus mu 2 this one minus rho sigma 1 sigma 2 x minus mu 1 plus sigma 1 square y minus mu 2 okay again this one is 1 by 2 matrix this is 2 by 1 matrix so the result will be 1 by 1 matrix so i can write minus 1 by 2 sigma 1 square sigma 2 square 1 minus rho square okay now it's going to be sigma 2 square x minus mu 1 whole square minus rho sigma 1 sigma 2 x minus mu 1 y minus mu 2 minus rho sigma 1 sigma 2 x minus mu 1 y minus mu 2 plus sigma 1 square y minus mu 2 whole square fine okay now again if i multiply this sigma 1 square sigma 2 square in the denominator inside minus 1 by 2 1 minus rho square so i will have x minus mu 1 by sigma 1 whole square because the sigma 2 square the sigma 2 square cancel here we have a minus rho sigma 1 sigma 2 x minus mu 1 y minus mu 2 here also same thing so i can write minus 2 rho and here i am multiplying 1 by sigma 1 square sigma 2 square inside here we have a sigma 1 sigma 2 so we will have x minus mu 1 by sigma 1 y minus mu 2 by sigma 2 now here and the sigma 1 square sigma 1 square cancel i can write then y minus mu 2 by sigma 2 whole square as you can see so this part got simplified to this one okay now you can see this is exactly giant pdf of bivariate normal distribution with the parameters mu 1 mu 2 sigma 1 square sigma 2 square and rho okay fine so this is the giant pdf of multivariate normal distribution of dimension k with the mean vector mu under bar and the covariance matrix sigma fine okay here we have a notation we read it as x under bar follows multivariate normal distribution of dimension k with a mean vector mu under bar and covariance matrix sigma okay and the giant mgf of this multivariate normal distribution is going to be this okay mx under bar of t under bar is e power t under bar transpose mu under bar plus of t under bar transpose sigma t under bar okay so this whole thing you see as a matrix multiplication okay because this t under bar going to be this column matrix t1 t2 so on tk 
this mu under bar going to be mu one mu two so on mu k and as you know the sigma is a covariance matrix sigma i j to the k by k matrix fine so this is the joint mdf of multivariate normal distribution with a mean vector mu under bar covariance matrix sigma fine okay order statistics in practice there are observation like marks by students and we may be interested in ordered observation like highest marks second highest marks or lowest marks things like that in general we are interested in probability distributions of what are called order statistics let me define this order statistics let x1 x2 so on xn are independent and identically distributed continuous random variables the common pdf small f of x and common cdf capital f of x here independent and identically distributed random variables we simply write as iid random variables okay fine now let me define following random variables as a functions of x1 x2 xn okay we define this x bracket 1 smallest of x1 x2 xn we call it first order statistics x bracket 2 which is second smallest of x1 x2 so on xn this one we call second order statistics and so on x bracket j which is the jth smallest of x1 x2 xn this one we call jth order statistics and so on x bracket n which is the largest of x1 x2 xn this one is nth order statistics in general for 1 less than or equal to j less than or equal to n, this x bracket j, which is a function of this x1, x2, xn, is going to be a random variable, which is a function from omega to r. Here, the outcome omega map to the jth smallest of jth smallest of x1 of omega x2 of omega so on xn of omega okay so this is the random variable which is j order statistics fine okay now here this x bracket 1 x bracket 2 so on x bracket n are called order statistics of this x1 x2 xn okay this x bracket 1 is first order statistics this one is second order statistics so on this one is nth order statistics this n dimensional random vector x bracket 1 x bracket 2 so on x bracket n are called order statistics of this n dimensional random vector x1 x2 so on xn fine okay note here this x bracket 1 x bracket 2 so on x bracket n are neither independent nor identically distributed because we can see that this x bracket 1 always less than or equal to x bracket 2 which is always less than or equal to x bracket 3 and so on as we have this order relation we can say that these order statistics can neither be independent nor identically distributed and we already know that this x bracket j is a function of this x1 x2 xm for j equal to 1 to n fine okay now we are going to look at the probability distribution of this j third statistics for 1 less than or equal to j less than or equal to n first we are going to get the cdf of this j third statistics then we can differentiate it to get the pdf of this j third statistics fine for 1 less than or equal to j less than or equal to n, CDF of this j third statistics at x by definition, probability of x bracket j less than or equal to x. Here x bracket j is j third statistics. So this x bracket j less than or equal to x means at least j of x1, x2, xn are less than or equal to x. Okay, that's why the probability of x bracket j less than or equal to x equal to probability of j or more of x size from x1 x2 xn are less than or equal to x to deal with this event let me consider the random variable s 
which denotes the number of x size that are less than or equal to x among x1, x2, xn. Here each xn may be less than or equal to x or xn may be greater than x. So let me call this one success, this one failure. So checking out if x size less than or equal to x is like a performing Bernoulli experiment. So checking out this x size less than or equal to x for i equal to 1 to n is like a performing sequence of independent identical Bernoulli trials. Independent because this x1, x2, xn are independent. Identical Bernoulli trials because this x1, x2, xn are identically distributed. So this s follows the binomial distribution with the parameter n and the probability of success f of x because here what is success x i less than or equal to x success x i greater than x failure so the probability of success is going to be probability of x i less than or equal to x and this is going to be capital f of x fine so this s follows the binomial distribution with a parameter n and the probability of success p is going to be f of x now this event j r more of x s less than or equal to x can be expressed in terms of s like this s greater than or equal to j so this is going to be probability of s greater than or equal to j therefore cdf of j third statistics at x going to be probability of s greater than or equal to j this probability of s greater than or equal to j we can write summation k equal to j to n probability of s equal to k now this probability of s equal to k using pmf of the binomial distribution you can write n choose k p power k that is p going to be f of x equal to the power of k 1 minus capital f of x equal to the power of n minus k so therefore the cdf of the jth order statistics at x going to be summation k equal to j to n n choose k capital f of x all to the power of k times 1 minus capital f of x all to the power of n minus k fine so this is the cdf of j third statistics for 1 less than or equal to j less than or equal to n fine okay okay now before i differentiate this cdf let me separate the last term like this summation k equal to j to n minus 1 i am writing here n choose k capital f of x equal to the power of k 1 minus capital f of x equal to the power of n minus k the last term for k equal to n it's going to be n choose n f of x equal to the power of n 1 minus f of x equal to the power of n minus n that is going to be 0 so simply this is going to be equal to capital F of x all to the power of n. Fine. Okay. So this is the CDF of J third statistics at x after separating the last term. Okay. Now let us differentiate this CDF to get the PDF of this J third statistics. Okay. So this is how we get pdf of this j order statistics now we have to differentiate the right hand side with respect to x so let's do that okay now okay now to differentiate this we have to differentiate term by term okay here in this summation in each term we can apply uv rule okay so so it's going to be the derivative of this i can write first of all n choose k i'm writing n factorial by k factorial n minus k factorial and the derivative of this f of x all to the power of k 1 minus f of x all to the power of n minus k you can think like a uv u dash this one is u dash v this one is u this one is going to be v dash okay because derivative of this f of x all to the power of k going to be k times f of x all to the power of k minus 1 by chain rule we have to differentiate this capital f of x the derivative of the capital f of x going to be small f of x okay so this is u dash v v is what 1 minus f of x all to the power of n minus k 
now u v dash now the derivative of 1 minus f of x what to the power of n minus k going to be n minus k 1 minus f of x what to the power of n minus k minus 1 the derivative of 1 minus capital f of x going to be 0 minus small f of x and the derivative of this capital f of x what to the power of n going to be n times capital f of x all to the power of n minus 1 by chain rule the derivative of the capital f of x going to be small f of x fine so this is the derivative of this right hand side okay okay now let me write down this one as a two sums like this okay here in this summation this k and this k factorial i can write this k minus 1 factorial so that's why n factorial by this k minus 1 factorial n minus k factorial f of x all to the power of k minus 1 small f of x 1 minus capital f of x all to the power of n minus k here this minus i'm writing here minus summation k equal j to n minus 1 here this n minus k this n minus k factorial i can write n minus k minus 1 factorial that's why we have here n factorial by k factorial n minus k minus 1 factorial and we have this f of x all to the power of k and 1 minus f of x all to the power of n minus k minus 1 and this f of x i'm writing here and this one as it is i'm writing fine okay now here you see if i just separate the first term when k equal j that is going to be n factorial by j minus 1 factorial n minus j factorial f of x all to the power of j minus 1 small f of x 1 minus capital f of x all to the power of n minus j and remaining things are summation k equal to j plus 1 to n minus 1 n factorial by k minus 1 factorial n minus k factorial f of x all to the power of k minus 1 small f of x 1 minus capital f of x all to the power of n minus k and this one as it is in this summation the k equal to j plus 1 term will be cancelled with k equal to j term here here k equal to j plus 2 term will be cancelled with k equal to j plus 1 term here so on here k equal to n minus 1 term will be cancelled with k equal to n minus 2 term here and here one term will be left over that is k equal to n minus 1 the corresponding term will be n factorial by n minus 1 factorial 0 factorial f of x all to the power of n minus 1 1 minus f of x all to the power of 0 small f of x okay now this term will be cancelled with this one okay here we have a minus right so n factorial by n minus 1 factorial going to be n so n times capital f of x all to the power of n minus 1 this get cancelled with this one okay fine so everything it cancels except the first term this one okay n factorial by j minus 1 factorial n minus j factorial times capital f of x all to the power of j minus 1 times small f of x times 1 minus capital f of x all to the power of n minus j okay this is going to be the pdf of j third of statistics at x okay So this is the PDF of j third of statistics at x n factorial by j minus 1 factorial n minus j factorial capital F of x all to the power of j minus 1 times 1 minus capital F of x all to the power of n minus j times small f of x for j equal to 1 to so on n. Okay. Now let's write down PDFs of this extreme order statistics that is PDF of first order statistics pdf of the nth order statistics okay to get the pdf of the first order statistics we have to take the j equal to 1 
if you take j equal to 1 here you get n factorial by 1 minus 1 factorial n minus 1 factorial capital F of x all to the power of 1 minus 1 1 minus capital F of x all to the power of n minus 1 small f of x here so this is 0 factorial so n factorial by n minus 1 factorial going to be n this one is f of x all to the power of 0 that is 1 so 1 minus capital F of x all to the power of n minus 1 times small f of x okay so this is the pdf of first order statistics at x okay now to get the pdf of the nth order statistics at x you have to take the j equal to n so what you get here if you take j equal to n so n factorial by n minus 1 factorial n minus n factorial f of x all to the power of n minus 1 1 minus f of x all to the power of n minus n small f of x so here this is 0 factorial n factorial by n minus n factorial again n f of x all to the power of n minus 1 1 minus capital f of x all to the power of 0 going to be 1 times small f of x okay so this is the pdf of nth order statistics at x fine okay for one less than or equal to j less than or equal to n the pdf of this j third statistics at x going to be n factorial by j minus 1 factorial n minus j factorial times capital f of x all to the power of j minus 1 times 1 minus capital f of x all to the power of n minus j times small f of x fine okay example let u1, u2, so on, un are iid uniform random variables or interval 0, 1. Then let's find out the probability distribution of j third statistics of u1, u2, so on, un for 1 less than or equal to j less than or equal to n. Okay, first of all, CDF of uniform distribution over the interval 0, 1, capital F of x equal to 0 for x less than 0 x for 0 less than or equal to x less than 1 1 for x greater than or equal to 1 okay and the pdf of the uniform distribution over the interval 0 1 small f of x equal to 1 for 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1 0 otherwise now the pdf of u bracket j at x is going to be n factorial by j minus 1 factorial n minus j factorial capital F of x all to the power of j minus 1 times 1 minus capital F of x all to the power of n minus j times small f of x okay and we can see that the small f of x value 0 outside interval 0 1 so we can say that this f u bracket j of x value 0 for x not in the interval 0 1 okay for 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1 this f u bracket j of x is going to be n factorial by j minus 1 factorial n minus j factorial this capital f of x is going to be x for 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1 so x to the power of j minus 1 1 minus x all to the power of n minus j times 1 as the small f of x value 1 for 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1 now this n factorial we can see as gamma n plus 1 and this j minus 1 factorial i can see as a gamma j this n minus j factorial we can see as a gamma n minus j plus 1 okay now i can write this one 1 by gamma j times gamma n minus j plus 1 by gamma n plus 1 times x to the power of j minus 1 1 minus x all to the power of n minus j fine okay now this gamma n plus 1 i can rewrite as gamma j plus n minus j plus 1 again same thing if you cancel j j again you have the same gamma n plus 1 so this x to the power of j minus 1 as it is 
this 1 minus x all to the power of n minus j, I am writing as 1 minus x all to the power of n minus j plus 1 minus 1. Fine. Okay. Now, this one can be seen as the beta function, beta j comma n minus j plus 1. Okay. This is for 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1. So, obviously outside 0. Right? Fine. So, for 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1, the PDF of u bracket j at x is going to be 1 by beta of j comma n minus j plus 1 x to the power of j minus 1, 1 minus x over to the power of n minus j plus 1 of minus 1, okay. Obviously, 0 otherwise, okay. This PDF we can recognize as PDF of beta distribution with the parameters j comma n minus j plus 1. So, we can say that this u bracket j follows beta distribution with the parameters j comma n minus j plus 1. For j equal to 1 to so on n. Fine. Okay. Here is a theorem without proof. Let x1, x2, so on, xn are independent, identically distributed, continuous random variables with a common PDF small f of x and common PDF capital F of x for 1 less than or equal to i less than j less than or equal to n. The joint PDF of x bracket i comma x bracket j at s comma t equal to n factorial by i minus 1 factorial j minus i minus 1 factorial n minus j factorial times small f of s times small f of t times capital F of s all to the power of i minus 1 times capital F of t minus capital F of s all to the power of j minus i minus 1 times 1 minus capital F of t all to the power of n minus j for minus infinity less than s less than t less than infinity 0 otherwise. Okay. Okay. So, so you need to remember this one because there is a problem in assignment 5 where you have to use this giant PDF. Okay. Fine. Okay, let me stop now. Thank you.